Right, thank you, thank you everyone for coming um, to our first meetup. Um, first, before starting, I would drive, like really to thank some people that helped us to make this event happen. Um, starting by uh, Dr. Kenny, um, who is not here. Actually, unfortunately, he had a car accident, and he was helping us to get that room and event sorted, and also with the help of Dr. Zhang. Uh, who had a lot also in getting that. Thank you very much. Um, uh, also, we'd like to thank Logical for giving us support and sponsoring, and uh, Peter from Exergy for doing the filming uh, so we can make the content available for everyone. Um, the whole idea of, of calling for that meetup is really building a community about how we use data analytics and artificial intelligence in construction. The industry is lacking behind in this area, and I think with, with the support of that community, we can make it grow. Uh, so the structure or the agenda of the first presentation are just introduction about what is AI, what is data science, and what is analytics. So basically defining the big, the big buzzwords in the industry um, and understanding what is the difference between them. And then we go to see some of the practical applications of the way that we can use AI, leverage it in order to get the construction project into a better state. Um, also, there is another uh, presentation um, uh, which will be delivered by Erika from Zazji about the seven um, uh, trends in, in the technology and how we can use them in the, in the construction industry. Um, so, introduction a bit of myself. Um, Coming from a civil engineering background, um, doing a PhD in, in relation to project controls and how we can use artificial intelligence in project controls. Um, so, to start with, we have industrial revolution, and the first industrial revolution was about the steam engines and um, having mechanical. Um, uh, Mechanical, um, no, sorry, mechanical um, engines and, and steam engines and stuff like that. And then going to industry two, which is mass production assembly lines. Um, the industry three is automation. It's mainly built around automation. The current trend which is coming into the market is industry 4.0. And the industry 4.0 is basically about cloud computing, internet of things, getting everything into the cloud and, and having an integrated data. Um, and as we will see later on in this presentation, the amount of data that we're producing is huge. Yesterday, there was um, a conference about data and analytics facility for national infrastructure, and this statement was made. So data is now important for the infrastructure project as well as the concrete and steel. That's how important it was emphasized, and that was by Sir John Armin. So, the... What we call the data explosion is, if you can see that graph, it shows that between 2009 and up to now, in 2017, the amount and the trend of the data increased. So it exponentially increased the amount of data that's available. And that's only 2009. If we went even further, that we find the amount of data that we were capturing at the time was much better. Um, but there is a split. And around 60 or 80% of the data that we have are unstructured data. And we'll get into discussion, discussing what is structured and unstructured data in later slides. In, in um, so, yeah, these are the key objectives of the meetup. So, we're trying to do build the community, knowledge sharing, and uh, think about uh, how we can work within different disciplines together. So, I've met some people with, coming from a background of data science, I've met some people from um, civil engineering and construction background. And I think combining this expertise, we, we can reach to a, a conclusion or we can develop new techniques that will suit the construction industry and show value into it. Um, so also we're looking at upskilling professionals from industry, from the construction industry, since the data science is quite a, a demanding, so there is a big learning uh, that needs to be done, needs to be undertaken in order to, uh, to, to be professional in data science. Um, I would say that, namely, um, you, you should know uh, statistics very well, some of the um, mathematics, like linear algebra and other stuff, computer programming, and the most important uh, is the domain knowledge. 
Um, so we're starting with definitions. We hear a lot of buzzwords in, 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 in that domain of uh, big data, big data analytics, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, um, uh, business intelligence. So there are a lot of these. So uh, I've seen in one of the online resources uh, a nice diagram that I wanted to share with you. So um, uh, these are like some of the business cases or the business stuff that we do on every day to day um, and they are related to business and some of them are related to data so we can see that there is an intersect but also there are some stuff which is outside the sphere of the business which is still related to data and we will get into analyzing this uh, one of the main things that we need to look at is the timeline here at the bottom and this timeline is referring to what is the present so that um, vertical line is the present Whatever is in the past is whatever is in the future. What is in the past is called analysis, and what is in the future is analytics. However, <coughs> it is commonly used, analytics is used to cover both of them. So most of the people within the data science or the analytics industry will refer to both as analytics. But just to make a distinction here, that I mean, when you hear the term analytics, you can't expect something in the future or something in the past. Um, so if we look at business case analysis, it is quite subjective documents related to business, not always built on data. However, I mean, there are debates about it, whether it is data driven or not, but it is mainly knowledge driven. Um, qualitative analytics, it is also subjective reports, predicting what's going to happen. It's like uh, reports about market forecasts, which is published by a lot of the big consulting companies. Um, sometimes it's built on data, sometimes it's based on um, investment decisions or um, subjective interpretation of what should be uh, happening in the future. Um, then we have preliminary data reports. It is what we do in the construction regularly, uh, like survey reports, um, uh, progress reports, and other stuff of this. Uh, dashboard reporting, and you can see that dashboard reporting is going towards uh, the present because we're trying to achieve uh, real-time reporting using the iPhone. Uh, then forecasting that definitely should go into the present, or the, sorry, to the future. And then business intelligence will cover in that area of dashboard reporting. Sorry. Um, we cover that area of dashboard reporting since it is uh, currently it's getting common in the industry. So a lot of people are started using tools like Power BI, ClickView, and Tableau to produce the report, and that automates the whole process. Um, it's proven to be a really good tool. It reduces the amount of effort and time to produce a report, so the focus is more on an analyzing the data rather than just presenting it and trying to get it out there. Um, then we have the term machine learning, and machine learning is largely related to data science and analytics, but it can extend beyond that. Uh, the main difference between the traditional analytics and the machine learning is machine learning can deal with structured as well as unstructured data that we discussed in the previous slide, which will still go into the details what is structured and what's unstructured data. But basically, you can think about unstructured data as videos, uh, images, um, audio. So, all this can be used by the computer to understand it. So, machine learning can understand text documents. Um, images, videos, and do analysis on that. Um, and then the wider vision is the artificial intelligence. And there are there are different types of artificial intelligence. But people, when they think, when you say, when you say the term artificial intelligence, people they have a mental representation of a robot uh, that mimics human being. Which we, I think, in in, in the current knowledge, we're far away from achieving what is called general artificial intelligence, so we can have a robot that mimics the people. But artificial intelligence is very powerful and very efficient in doing one task at a time. So you train the computer to do a task, and then the computer will go and do it. However, the difference between machine learning and artificial intelligence is that artificial intelligence works with data, and also it does more, more uh, tasks, like planning. Um, uh, it does also uh, search, optimization, 
uh, which is outside of the scope of that presentation, but I'm pretty sure we will have in next session some discussion about how artificial intelligence and optimization algorithms can work in the construction industry. Um, so optimization of operations comes under artificial intelligence, as I mentioned. Let's take a little bit later. So data types, and that's what that's the main focus that we're talking about. So we have structured data, which is the traditional sort of data where you have tables, spreadsheets, or any sort of data that is structured in, in columns and rows, and these are uh, quantifiable uh, information. While big data, which is the unstructured data, and it's defined with five dimensions, which we'll discuss in, in, in a second. So we have predictive analytics, which anything which comes beyond the present line, anything in the future, has three types of this, uh, has three, three main types. Supervised and unsupervised and, and, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is basically you have a data set which is tagged. And when I mean tagged or labeled, uh, is if you want to do a regression, uh, you have, a, say, you, you want to predict the house price in, in a particular area. So you have all the house prices or all the house transactions that happen in that area with a tag, which is the value which is sold for. And you can use this information to train the computer based on real input. Um, and classification is, uh, it's, it's basically classifying things in, into categories, whether it is, um, so if we, if we talk about images, for example, you can classify that an object is in, a, in an image, it's a cat or a dog. And that's how the classification works. Uh, it also works in, Structured data, so you can predict, there is a zero one predict, uh, classification where you can have, um, uh, say, um, whether the project will finish on time or not. So if it's going to finish on time, that, that it will report true, if not, it will report false. With, with giving you a, pre, a, a precision uh, um, value. Uh, the unsupervised learning is, is, is a bit different, so you do clustering, and clustering is basically a has like a big data and you don't give it any labels for this data and you ask the, the, the machine learning algorithm to, to cluster or to group them into different groups. That's used heavily, heavily in, in um, commercial applications like in Amazon and any other um, retail thing where they do, Netflix is one, one good example of that. So they cluster the, the users or the subscribers in order to do a recommendation for them. So when you go to Amazon, you bought a book they will tell you that if you bought this book, you might, you, you might be interested in that book. Most of the time, it's relevant to me. Some people will say it's not. But, um, reinforcement learning is a sort of a supervised learning, but it differs from the way that it works. So supervised learning is working on a way to minimize the error. So uh, we, we, I, will, I will show you in the next graph. Um, how, how that works, but in, in, in reinforcement learning, it's, it's more like an award system. So whenever you do something wrong, or whenever the algorithm uh, is achieving or reaching the target, then you get you give it a reward. Um, I'll, I would say that if you, if you want to think about reinforcement learning, you think about Super Mario, the game. So if you're playing Super Mario, every time you take uh, one of the mushrooms, you, you grow up. So that's exactly the way that you do super hard, uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, regression, and I've mentioned here linear regression, but there are different types of regressions. But regression is basically, if we use the house example that I have before, we have all these house prices, and you can see that there is a correlation between these house prices, that whenever the size increase, the price increases. Um, basically, the regression will just have that line, straight line, the linear regression will have that straight line, with one condition, that the sum of squared errors, which means that the sum of all the difference between these points and the line, is equal to zero. And that's where you minimize the, 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 the error, or you, you minimize the loss. Um, there is also non-linear regression, and these are quite good shapes of them. Uh, so if we try on the, on the left-hand side, if we try to make a prediction using linear regression, that would be the result. And it's, 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 I think it's, it's quite obvious that it's not a good predictor. 
but we can match it with a line in, in, in the other shape on the right hand side, and that would be a, a giving us a much more um, power for, for good prediction. So that's, as you can see, that's 95% confidence level of doing prediction. However, we need to be, we need to be very careful when you do a uh, high level or high degree of, of, of regression uh, not to overfit, because if, if you overfit the data, you will have your training set fit is quite good, whilst when you try to generalize your model, it will not work outside. Um, that's a, an example of the classification where you have a classifier, it has this function, and it predicts whether it's zero or one, it is something like the, the, the example I mentioned about whether the process will finish on time or not. So anything in, in blue would be, yes, it's finishing on time, anything in red would not be finishing on time. So there are a lot of variables that you need to consider how you build your model. And that's showing, uh, you cannot show it on the graph because usually it's not like one dimension or two dimensions. Or, or it can be hundreds of dimensions, which there is no visual way of presenting it. So it's for simplification, we just consider two variables just to make it easy to, to visualize. Uh, so big data has five Ds, or five different variables uh, or, or attributes to it, which is volume, so the, the volume of the data that we store. And some people, they say that the volume of the data is considered big data when you cannot store it on a physical computer. Uh, velocity is the, uh, is the speed of how data is transferred. And I was reading an article today that every minute, there are 400 hours of videos uploaded to YouTube. So the amount of data that we can have from YouTube, if we can analyze and make the computer understand videos, is massive. Uh, variety, so as, as I mentioned before, the big data can be images, can be audio, or can be any other sort of information or data. It can be geospatial data uh, coming from a GIS system or any, any other sort of system that the computer can understand. Um, there are a lot of work to be done on understanding different types of information and data that are coming from different sources. So images now is quite good. The computers are quite good at understanding it. Text as well. Uh, I think videos is a bit of a challenge that we will see some, some examples later. Um, and the variability of the data. So the data is using variable. And, and having a large variability that gives you a bit better way of predicting and, and doing inference into the future. Um, the value. Are we collecting this data for, for a reason? You know, what is the business case of, have of, of doing all this work? Is there a valid case that we have to collect all this data and, and, and do the analysis and do the analysis? For it? And the rest, the rest is, is, is about uh, uh, whether the, the accuracy of the data that we're collecting is good or not. And if you have um, bad quality data that you have, um, no accuracy in this data, then all the predictions that you're going to do will not be useful. Um, so, the big data analytics, I'm just mentioning some examples that's not exclusive by any means, but these are the hot topics that currently run. So, we have a computer vision, and the computer vision is how the computer can act like a human being, how like having an eyes that can see things and then can do it and understand these things and summarize them. Natural language processing. In construction, we have a lot of information that is written documents. So we have plans, processes, procedures, standards, all these are written documents. So can the computer really understand these documents and make uh, make make use of that understanding or not? And audio recognition. Uh, and I think that's quite established in, in the industry now. That, um, you have a lot of speech recognition, so you can dictate to your computer, and the computer will give you the, the, the written word. And the, the, the main thing that these things together, they can work sequentially. So we can have an audio that is transferred to the text, and then the text can be understood by using natural language processing uh, or, or any other way. So when, when you can do the data. So computer vision as well, if you have a scan document, handwritten document, the computer can understand it and then transfer it into text and you can do some natural language processing in it to get more insights from that text. Um, neural networks, it's, it, neural networks is quite, 
a topic that was that caused a problem within within the AI and in, in, in the industry in, in the data industry in general because that's called what's called the um, AI winter where people start stop believing in AI. But currently, neural network is getting more attraction and is getting more re reliable. Um, so a neural network is basically you feed the computer some input. You have some hidden layers in between, and then have an output. Um, the, the, the hidden layers and that connects all the inputs and the outputs and assign weights to each of them. Uh, the main problem with neural network is understandability. So most of the people they, they need to know how to interpret the, the outcome of this neural network. Uh, so it, it's simplest when you have one hidden layer. Now there is a, a, a booming thing about and. So it's a hot topic in the industry also talking about the deep learning and deep learning they add a lot of uh, hidden layers and then they add some features like conclusion neural networks and uh, or, or short long uh, sorry long short time memory uh, which can do some uh, serious sequence analysis of these things and, and also it's used heavily in text analysis. So in the construction, I mean I just had to, to make that quick introduction about data science. It's not comprehensive, but just to make people aware how that thing works. So, in, in the, um, most of the time, that the business analytics work is during that cycle, the seven, the seven step cycle. Most of the people working in the data science, they, they, they know it. They start with business understanding, and that's the key to any successful implementation of any uh, of, of data science. If you don't have the domain knowledge, you won't know what would be a good use case, and you won't know what data to collect in order to do your prediction. And then data mining, cleaning, exploration, it's basically working with the data, getting the data set, cleaning it up, and start investigating and checking what are, what are the correlation between different variables that you have, what variables will, will make a good prediction, what variables are not really useful to you, and you just need to discount them. Um, then, there is feature engineering again. It's about selection of, of which features that we're considering in our in, in our model, and building a predictive model and data visualization. Most of the people that are new to that domain, they would think about okay, the predictive model is the data that we need to be focused on. But in the pool, they have done a study, and in that study, if you look at this category, more than 80% of the data scientists' time is spent on data collection and cleaning. And uh, looking at the modeling, uh, it's like 13, 14 percent of the time of their time they spend on building models, um, and that's due to also, I mean, the, 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 the contribution of um, the frameworks that have been developed by big companies like Google and Facebook, which makes makes it really easy to to, to produce a model if you have the data and you understand it. So there are like the likes of TensorFlow, Keras, and other uh, frameworks that you can just use. It's basically uh, in a few hours you can you can get the model. Uh, I'm coming from a project controls background, so planning and project controls, task management, estimating. And if I have to say what are the relationships that we currently have, if we point to the database for what we have and from cost estimating, cost control, risk, um, program management. This would be the relationship that we have between these things. Um, which is quite complicated, and in order to extract the data from there, it is not that easy. However, it's doable. Uh, but in the industry, we have a new trend, which is BIM, the BIM information modeling. So I'd say that we, can, we can convert this model by relating everything to a BIM model, like central repository for all the information. And then the extraction of information is quite easy. Plus, if we give us additional dimensions that is not existing in the current data, like properties of material, dimensions of each of the elements that we're doing, which um, will give us a lot of information that can do better predictive models. Um, here I went and just listed some of the applications that I've read through uh, that have been implemented and they are, they are, they are currently working. So in project controls and reporting, uh, BI tools, I think 
most of you have seen it working in the construction industry, but BI tool is basically creating the dashboard that automates the process of producing reports. So the, the focus will be more on um, analyzing the results rather than focusing on recreating the reports. Uh, performance, monitoring, progress, and, and automating progress capturing, that's a, a quite a, a good topic that I've read about a lot, and I'm trying to implement it as well. So it's basically using computer vision on automating the process of progress capturing. So using the computer, using a normal camera that can be on a webcam or anything to, to, to take a, fo a photo or an image and transfer that image to 3D point cloud, relating it to the film model and updating the film model and giving this information. Um, if you have a good predictive model that will give you a, an edge on accurate forecasting, and I'm pretty sure that most of the people working in construction they have problems with accurate forecast. So most of the time, the, the forecast for next month or next two months or three months doesn't really happen as, as, as you do it. So, um, uh, and it doesn't give confidence to most of the clients that if you cannot forecast accurately in the next two or three months, how we can forecast the coach condition of the uh, the, the, Yeah, uh, schedule, duration, and, and cost estimation prediction. So if we can model all the factors that affect what is the schedule duration and the cost uh, estimation, then the, 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 the predictive model can do the, the whole estimation for the duration and the cost. Uh, automatically without having um, without having somebody to, to do the measurements from from from, um, from drawing. Um, however it needs to be sensitive because it is it is a commercial risk it is high risk for any contractor that can can cause problems so it has to be sensitive. Um, I'll come back at the end of this to a point about uh, employment and, and the social aspect of, of having AI because a lot of people think that yeah if we have AI then we won't have employment, we won't have jobs and that's entirely not true. Uh, procurement and that's quite an interesting topic. It's about work winning and how you can use artificial intelligence and machine learning to do work winning. Um, and there is a bit of announcement in here so there is um, next month hopefully that we, we're planning to do an event. And one of the, the speakers, one of the speakers in that event is um, a, a senior data scientist in IBM, who did a lot of work on work winning and procurement. I will describe that uh, process in a later stage. But he's going to present uh, how he contributed, him and his team contributed to add, I think, 360 million revenue to IBM by just having, uh, by, by implementing the artificial intelligence algorithm work. Uh, commercial, and that's related to text analytics. How the computer can read the contract, extract the requirements from the contract, and make sure that it's compliant with it. And the same thing with correspondence, where we can just. Uh, and I think you can see it in most of the uh, Outlook applications. So when you have an email, it tells you that there are actions or schedule a meeting, and that's part of the artificial intelligence or natural language processing, where the computer can understand the email, tell you that I think you have an action in here. You've missed an attachment. Um, engineering, and uh, that's an interesting bit. So, if you have, if you're doing the design, and then you have um, specification that you're working towards, natural language processing can understand it, and then the big data analytics can understand your design and do a compliance check whether you, your design is compliant with that specs or not. Uh, and also, it can do some design recommendations. So, if you're designing something. A recommender system can tell you, you know what, change that bridge from a single span to a double span bridge, or add or change the spans, uh, increase them, or reduce them. Um, in HR, there are a lot of work done in HR about um, extracting skills requirements, uh, extra uh, doing analysis on CVs, and um, uh, interview video analysis. Uh, however, there are some ethical discussions about it, whether it is ethical thing to do or not, but I mean, to me, it's, I'm just talking about the research critical. The legal part, I'm not, not recommending to everyone. <laughs> um, so, health and safety. Uh, that's one, one of the things that, I, I've done that in, in my computer in two days, 
and most of the two days was the computer running and not me, not feeding me anything. And it is basically using my computer webcam um, to do prediction whether the people on site are wearing their PPE or not. Uh, it is fairly easy and simple to do nowadays. Um, in the past, it was really difficult to do, but now using the new frameworks, it's, it is quite easy to do. Um, also, one of the things that I've seen before, I haven't done it myself, but I've seen it before, is that when you have a people on site, they can wear some wearable devices which reports um, using the Internet of Things or IoT. So it reports their, um, um, their health status, so like the heartbeats and other stuff. And then that can do prediction whether these guys will suffer from anything in the future or not. Uh, so there is like heart attack detection or prediction. So you can predict that somebody will get a heart, a heart attack in, in the next few months or few weeks or whatever. And you can have an intervention in up to. Uh, and by the way, it's heavily used in the medical field to detect cancers and, and all the other sorts of uh, um, Security, that's, I think that's quite obvious, face recognition, face detection. So if you, if somebody uploaded a photo of you on, 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 on Facebook or Instagram, you got a notification saying somebody has uploaded a photo that you, might, you may be in. Without, without even tagging you, and that's coming from face recognition. But we can use that quite efficiently in construction by just having a camera on the, on, on the entrance of the site, and that will tell you that whether that person is authorized to go in or not. Uh, another thing which is AMPR, which is used heavily by the police now, in order to read the number plates of each car and tell you whether this car has problems. So we can do the same with delivery trucks to understand which delivery trucks came to site, what Load, what they were loading, what the video they built to your site, so you can go into the management and try to do it. Performance monitoring, and that's not about banks. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, the, the, the first picture on, on, on the, on the left hand side is about how you convert a 3D, uh, sorry, a 2D image into 3D point cloud. And that's a 2D image to, taken by a stereo camera. And that stereo camera is basically having two cameras linked together. You know the location of each one of them, and using simple trigonometry, uh, you can you can you can you can produce a 3D point cloud. Uh, the point cloud is a huge amount of points for each pixel. Here represents a point in the three dimension. Uh, maybe it's not very clear in here, but it it is proven. Uh, the other thing on the on, on the right hand side. Uh, it's not related to construction. Usually people don't dance inside, but um, it is a proof of concept that the computer can understand actions or activities happening by people on site. And I'm, I'm currently working on a research on how to get, uh, how to train the computer to understand activity which is done by construction workers on site. So if somebody is doing digging a hole, then it will tell you that this person is excavating. Some other uh, equipment moving on site. Uh, it, it can even forecast whether there is a collision will happen or not. So if, if, if a truck is driving over a person, it will tell you that be aware that there is a risk or a hazard over there. Uh, so that's something which is quite interesting to me personally. Uh, planning and control that's a dashboard, and most of you would be familiar with it. Uh, but basically, the, the, the whole thing is built on top of the database or a source of the database, whether it's a spreadsheet or, or, or a SQL database or a non SQL database. And it collects all the information where you can drill down to the certain level to get specific level of the information that you want. Uh, one interesting thing about community engagement, and, and that's the new topic and the hot topic in the industry. Uh, how do you know whether like a big scheme or a big project, people are with or against that project. And it's using a fairly simple concept, which is called sentiment analysis. And the sentiment analysis is identifying from social media whether people who tweet are against or with the project. Uh, it uses natural language processing. There are a bit of challenges in there. Um, so some of the tweets or some of these posts on Facebook or, or or Twitter, or any, any of the social media, will have some sarcasm sur based interest. So somebody will say, 
yeah, this project is great. It took all our money and it didn't do anything. Uh, but for sent normal sentiment analysis, we take it like, yeah, it said the project is great, so that's possible. Uh, however, there are a, a lot of um, algorithms which are now can detect sarcasm. So what you can do is do a sequential model where first you detect the sarcasm, put it as a variable, and then use it, use the variable within your overall model to, de to detect whether something is positive or negative. So basically, if there is a sarcasm, that the prediction will be reversed. reversed. Uh, so these are the, this is the procurement process that we're going to discuss next month. I can just go through it quickly, but I think the details will come next month to, 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 to get us more insights into it. Uh, so basically, you get the request for proposal using natural language processing. You capture the requirement, you extract the requirement from the proposal, and then you identify these requirements and start mapping it to your offering. So what we offer, and, and then use that offering in order to do prediction for the pricing and even the last bit, which was amazing, that predicting whether you are going to win the contract or not. Uh, at the beginning, I was a bit suspicious that that worked. But I've seen some results which prove that to be over 90% accurate, which is, I think, it's a great thing. Um, so, just ending up with the community strategy, and our plan is to have monthly meetup. Um, I would like to have a survey whether people prefer, what format people prefer to have that meeting on. So, whether you would like to have more workshops, like hands on training, and how to do things or hackathons where we get some problems and we try to solve them together, uh, or training sessions. And the last thing is uh, the Open Data Initiative, which I've discussed with a couple of you before that meeting. And one of the major things that we face in construction is that most of the data is classified as confidential, so you're not allowed to share it. However, um, I've started working on collecting the data set that will be available today to all the people within the industry, so it's an open data. Um, and I would like contribution from everyone really, that if you have any data, just share it, and we'll put it in a central repository, give access to everyone, and that's where you can develop some good stuff and get some insights into it. Um, so yeah, we're just waiting for your contribution, and we're promoting the community, uh, propose some speakers, we, we, I mean, the amount of response I got from the, from, from the community in, in Birmingham is quite amazing. So I wasn't expecting that number of people who would, would participate in that uh, session. Um, also, I have uh, speakers lined up for the next couple of months. But I think if we have good speakers and, and good case studies or something to show that it would somewhere else, that would be great. Um, we actually got the, the, this room by Aspen University, which I, I, I think I thank uh, yeah, Dr. Zhang and, and uh, Dr. Kenneth for, for, for their support. And I'm hoping, or I'm wishing Dr. Kenneth will, um, will, will, will recover soon from his uh, incident. Uh, so the next plan meeting is on the 9th of July, and we we'll just follow the details when we finalize them and, and, and other details. Um, any questions? So it wasn't clear at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I have a question. Yeah, sorry. Maybe it's because I came late. Sorry? Uh, maybe it's because I came late. No, it's all right. It's all right. Um, it's very interesting. Interesting community. Um, I'm just trying to understand the, the purpose and end goal. Uh, well, the purpose of it is basically about knowledge sharing and, and since the data science and construction are two unrelated industries up to now, we're trying to create an interdisciplinary um, community that people will learn from each other. Uh, yeah, there is, no, there, there, there is no commercial purpose to that. It's basically a community and building up a community in the Western Okay, we're trying to solve any, any challenge we have in construction. Yes, I mean, that's where I uh, think that um, here in the slide is listed some of these challenges that we would like to work on, and that's what 
related to the open data that I'm saying that I'm trying to collect this open data. So we have access to it, and then we can start trying addressing all these challenges. Um, well, health and safety is one of the biggest challenges that we need to take care of. So one of it is, and as you can see, that if you can do, um, if you can detect any any violation or health and safety violation and stop it, that would be a proactive measure. On, on preventing accidents or incidents from happening rather than waiting for, for it to happen and then we stop investigating. And it is similar to quality and security. Um, stakeholder engagement as an example of that um, sentiment analysis that I was just, just mentioning now. If you manage to understand what are the major uh, issues or the major challenges that people are, are talking about that they don't want to, they don't like a particular scheme, then you can address these concerns in your design. And so th 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 there are various challenges, and I think these just, it's, it's not an exclusive list, it's just, it's, 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 it's just some examples. The list can go on and on. Uh, hope that does the question. In, in a way, um, I'm, I'm starting to see where there's any output out of the whole, because obviously I think everyone is also working in construction and they have all these challenges, and we can relate to everything you said. And mm -hmm. And the potential of you know, addressing those challenges are very interesting and something that obviously will be very useful to the construction uh, industry as, as, as a whole. It's, 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 it's an interesting thing to, you know, with all this kind of sharing of knowledge and, 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 and data and trying to find ways of dealing with this, this problem. Surely, we should be, you know, there should be an end goal in terms of coming up with something to. I would give the consent to say, yeah, we'll find a way of solving this problem for you. I'm not, it's yeah, just me thinking. No, no it, it, it's right. And that's why I have also here, when I said that we, I would like, a, I, I would issue a survey after that meeting where, what people want to do. So if it's workshops, then it would be a hands on workshop where we get, if it's a hackathon, we will have a problem. We will have the data set for that problem. And we try to solve that problem within that action. And you will have the experience of different people whether they are construction related or data science related, then you will have all these people coming together and they will come up with a better solution than one person will have it on the end. Can I just add as well, um, I myself only came across the meetup uh, via the website and I only came across it because I'm fascinated in the topic of machine learning. I've seen how it's applied in your search. I'm only seeing now how it's being applied in some technology that's being developed. Um, I think that it's open to everybody's suggestions and, and it, it should be, as Hassan says, community-based so that any one of us can take initiative and maybe suggest a talk, or suggest a topic or a problem and we find ways to then tackle those issues yeah. and perhaps extend invites to also professionals in the data science fields and computer science, certainly machine learning experts, to try and see and envisage how we could start to apply this in our day-to-day -day activities and work. Yeah, thank you. So any other questions? Just to come back to that, so is this group uh, focused on big data professionals, construction professionals, and anyone in between, so I think that would allow the so yes, I, I think in, in this room we have a, a, a diversity of this, of this group that you just mentioned. Yes. Uh, so I have I had discussions with people before we start the meeting, and some of them came from data analytics background, some of them from IT, and some others from construction. And I think that's it. That, that will empower the whole discussion if we decide that we go to the hackathon and we have the data, and then we start working with the data, then we find that the, the knowledge and the experience is in, in that area.